Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Miss Glow Glow Motivation. I'm back with another video this morning. I just want to come and chat with you guys, and that's it. Just, just to have a friendly talk, and we will be doing the verse of the day and the devotion of the day, because you know I can't go by without doing that. Peace, prayers, love, peace, and everything to you guys. Happy Thursday to everybody today. This is truly a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So today what I'm about to do is I have already took, um, well, I haven't taken these. I have taken this vitamin, B12. I've taken those already. I'm going to take these, the turmeric. These, if you don't know what turmeric is, these are so good. Uh, it's all natural. And it, um, I'm talking about if you suffer with arthritis and inflammation in the joints and stuff, this stuff will make your body feel 100% good. Try it. Don't take my word for it. Try it. Um, I just took these, my women's multivitamins. So I'm about to take these. And I'm about to take the turmeric, which I have right here. This is the turmeric, and this is the vitamin C. So I have to do two of those. They're chewable. So let's get to chewing. Uh, okay, let me see. Then I take these. They are called Norevia Brain Health. These are for your brain. You can read that. You can look them up if you want. So I do two of these. I actually got to go get some more because I look like I got by 12 left. Um, you take two of these. They're chewables. I'm going to lay them right there. And I think that's it. These are the melatonin that I chew two of these every night. They help me to sleep. So they're only for night. Then I take my blood pressure pill right here, which I don't mind. Blood pressure pill have been cut so... My doses have been cut, so I only do one of the blood pressure pills, so I only do a half of that. Um, I only have five pills that I take as far as medicine. This is a fluid pill. I'm not going to take that today because I took it yesterday. This is the Meglazine. This is for my vertigo. I suffer from vertigo. If you don't know what vertigo is, it's like a water sickness. Um, it causes your head to spin. So I take that. And I have an aspirin that I take every day because of the stroke that I had at the brain. Just one of those. And it's one more pill somewhere. My astorvastatin. This is for cholesterol. And I take these every other day. And that's it. I only take really four pills a day as far as medicine. One, the aspirin I really consider medicine is just to keep my blood thin enough so I won't stroke up again. And I take vitamins. My life mostly, my meds mostly consist of vitamins. I'm still chewing the calcium. So, let me give y'all some information right quick. My... My appointment with my soon-to-be new landlord was yesterday. I paid my rent and my deposit yesterday. Yes, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I actually don't get the keys to Tuesday. I can move in Tuesday because they're still preparing my apartment. You guys don't know my oldest sister by my mom, my biological sister, stay over there in that apartment, senior citizen community low income and her building caught a fire some months ago so <clears throat> some of the uh, the departments caught a fire because somebody was in there not paying attention cooking thank god nobody got hurt and some of the departments had to be redone one moment mm. 
So I'm pretty excited for going over paying my rent and deposit yesterday. I get the keys Tuesday. I will be giving you guys an unfurnished apartment tour. And then once I get in there and get it furnished, I'll give you guys uh, like certain different little videos showing as I do certain things. It might be a minute before I get some furniture in there. So I will be going in there with just my TV, you know, my kitchen stuff, um, you know, different stuff, different little pictures and things on the walls, my uh, queen size air mattress. That's what I'll be going in there with, which is perfectly fine for me because it's just me. But I will be getting furniture. It's just that I want to take my time because I want to get a certain furniture. I want me a nice big sectional in my living room. I want me a nice dining set. And I want a nice bedroom set. So I'm going to take my time and I'm going to try to do one at a time or maybe two. I kind of was thinking about going to Renner Center, getting me a bedroom set. But we will see. All right. As of right now, it's on the halo because I kind of want to just lay away me some furniture and take my time getting it out so I can get exactly what I want. That was four pills gone down the drain. That is my medicine. How's everybody doing today? Happy Thursday. What did you guys do yesterday? What did you have for dinner? Any new endeavors in your life? Let me know. Um, this is the Brain Help Gummy Vitamin. It's very sour. It's tart. Uh, so you have to chew them really good. I went and bought some things for the house yesterday. I'm going to the laundromat either today or tomorrow. I only have like a load and a half of clothes, but I did get some dishwashing liquid, bleach, laundry detergent, fabric softening sheets, tissue. I need to get some paper towels. I got some plastic spoons and forks. I already have some, uh, a little dishes and stuff, and then other people just giving me stuff. So I'm going to be all right. I already know it. God is a good God. And one thing I know about my God is that he's going to hang you on the bush. He won't take you out there on the on the limb and leave you hanging. If he takes you to it, he's going to bring you through it. You just got to trust and believe. Be patient and wait on the Lord. Now, we're going to go ahead and get into this. Um, get into this. Excuse me, y'all. This verse of the day and the devotion of the day. Which is the verse of the day and devotion of the day, which is coming from the verse of the day is coming from James chapter 3, verse 18. And it reads like this And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Mm. That sounds so good. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. <clears throat> the inspiration says, God calls us to be peace, loving peoples in all that we do. For in him we know eternal peace. And so he instructs us to sow peace with others. God instruct us to sow peace with others, to make peace with others. It said that he calls us to be in peace, loving peoples. He don't just cause us to have peace, to be in peace, but he calls us to love peoples. And it said, in all that we do, we should love peoples. For in him, we know eternal peace. 
So he instructs us to sow peace with others. Where condemnation leads to wrath and discord, peace sown in love and mercy leads to the righteousness that comes only from God's grace. Yes, he said condemnation leads to wrath and discord among peoples. He said, but peace that is sown in love and mercy, it leads to the righteousness that only comes from God's grace. Okay, the verse of the day came from James chapter 3, verse 18. You can read it for yourself. The devotion of the day is coming from 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 21 through 23. The title says, it takes a big person to walk away. It takes a big person to walk away. Kindness is more powerful than violence kindness is more powerful than violence and it takes a big person to walk away let's go to second kings chapter six right quick second kings going back to the old testament second kings six i think it's 21 let me make sure Yep, 2123. And it reads as thus. If you want to read with me, I'm in 2 Kings chapter 6, starting at the 21st verse to the 23rd verse. And it says, And the king of Israel said unto Elijah, When he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? Once again, verse 21. And the king of Israel said unto Elijah, when he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow, with thy bow? Set bread and water before them that they may eat, drink, and go to their master. And he prepared a great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away. And they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. See, Elijah had asked, went to the Lord. He, the, the king of Israel, excuse me, the king of Israel had went to Elijah and he asked, he said, when he saw them, he said, my father, he asked him, can he smite? He wanted permission to smite the peoples. He wanted to smite the peoples of Samaria. But what was the answer? The answer was given to him was, thou shalt not smite, smite them. He said, you should not smite them. He said, will you smite the peoples that you take captive with your sword? Will you? So therefore, he was told to not smite them. He was told to set bread and water before them, okay, and let them eat and drink, and then let them go on to their master. Everything that you do does not need to be done out of spite, anger, envy, and disaccord. This is the spirit was telling him, no, do not smite them. He said, feed them, and then send them to their masters, okay? He said, and then he prepared a great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away and they went to their masters. So listen to this. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. They didn't come no more. They, they didn't have to worry about uh, uh, Syria coming no more. It took care of it. Through love and kindness have I drawn thee. Okay. If we go back to... What the, the devotion is talking about, it said it take a big person to walk away. Sometimes you got to put on your big girl panties, your big boy's drawers, and you have to walk away. Sometimes we have to, once somebody slap us on one cheek, we got to turn the other cheek, okay? Simply meaning to walk away, to let some things be done with. Okay, the Bible says kindness is more powerful than violence. Kindness is more powerful than violence. But if we go back to uh, 2 Kings 6 
And if we go to the 21st verse, let's read. It say, And it came to pass after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up to besiege Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until an ass head was sold for fourscore pieces of silver. And the fourth part of a cap of dough dung for five pieces of silver. And the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall. And there cried a woman to him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, whence shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. Mm. You hear that? After all that had went on, remember now, let's go back, back up a minute. Remember we just read where it said, wait a minute. It said, and the king of Israel said unto Elijah, when he saw him, my father, shall I smite them, shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Now this is where here they was this is talking about it says, let's back up to the twentieth verse. It says, And it came to pass when they were coming to Samaria, that Elijah said, Lord, open the eyes of these minions, that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, there were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elijah, When he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? This is when they was, um, this is when they was led uh, to go to Samaria. And that, this is when Elijah uh, told the Lord to open the eyes of the men so that they may see, and that the Lord did open their eyes, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. So when they went there, now remember they went to Samaria and they was told what to do by the Holy Spirit. But then when they go down to 21, this is where uh, Elijah was asking, can he smite the men? And he was given, no, do not smite them. He, the, the Spirit said, feed them, get them bread and drink and send them back to their masters. And because he obeyed and did it, when it came to pass, it said, and it came to pass after this, that Ben Hadad, king of Samaria, gathered all his hosts and went up to besiege Samaria, that there was a great famine in Samaria. Now there come a famine there in that same place that this, the Lord had took them to and where Elijah wanted to smite them, but he said, don't smite them. Get them bread and, and water and send them back to their masters. Now at this same place where they went and they, he spared them, guess what? It said, and there was a great famine. They had, they done came into a famine. Now they done had a famine in the land where they got a shortage of food and stuff. Listen to this. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until an ass head was sold for four score pieces of silver and fourth part of a cab of dough dung for five pieces of silver. And the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, and there was a woman crying to him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. She said, Help, because somebody, the king asked the woman what was wrong with her. And she said that a woman had said unto her, give me your son so that we may eat him today. And then we'll eat my son tomorrow. You know, it was a, a lack of food there. It was a famine, which means it's dry. It was dry. They had nothing to eat. They couldn't even sell nothing to get food. So guess what? A woman came to the lady and told her to give me your son so we can eat him today. And tomorrow we'll eat my son. So I'm sure that bothered that lady. You know, now they turn into cannibalistics. They ready to eat up each other because there was nothing left in the land to eat. Okay. Now, it said, listen to this. Give thy son so that we may eat him today and we will eat my son tomorrow. Why you couldn't eat your son today and we eat my son tomorrow? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That is how people will literally do you. You pay today and I'll pay tomorrow. Tomorrow ain't promised to you. You might not get a chance to do it. 
So do your part today and let me worry about tomorrow. Okay? Now, why would a woman come to this woman and ask her to give me your son so that we can eat him today? But I want, I'm going to say mine and we're going to eat him tomorrow. Listen to this. Verse 29. It says, so we barred my son. Hallelujah, Jesus. Listen to this. They barred him. This is a child. This is a person, a human. They bought, we bought my son and we did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, listen, listen to this. Now she done been tricked. And I said unto her on the next day, give thy son that we may eat him. And she had hid her son. She tricked him. Then she done ate this woman's son. How they can eat him, I just don't, can't fathom it and make water come in my mouth. I want to throw up right now. But how can you trick somebody? You done killed this woman's son. Y'all done boiled him and ate him. But when it comes the next day for you to, to boil your son and y'all eat him because y'all ain't got nothing to eat. But the son must was mighty little for them to eat the son unless it was a whole lot of people that was eating him. For them to eat the whole son at one time. But listen to this. Verse 30, it said, And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes, meaning he tore his clothes, and he passed by up on the wall. And the peoples looked, and behold, he had a sackcloth within upon his flesh. Who that bothered the king so bad that he tore his clothes. You know, imagine if somebody come to you, and, and if it's a, a famine in this world right here, where there's no food, nothing, no animals, nothing that you can gather, scatter, catch, or whatever to eat. And it get to the point where you have to say, let's eat my child today, or eat my sister and brother today, or whoever person it is, and tomorrow we'll eat this person. It got to be a rough, rough, tough time in this world. And then the lady fooled her. She tricked her. She wanted to eat. So all she know is she told her to cook your son and let's eat him and I'll cook mine tomorrow. But when tomorrow came, she done already hid her son. <laughs> she wasn't finna eat her baby. See, that's how the enemy do. He tricks you. He's a trickster. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. He's a deceptor. And he's doing his job. Okay, and it's up to us if we let the deceiver get in our mind because all he can do is put thoughts in our head. And if we act upon it, it's on us. That woman tricked this lady. Read this. This is in 2 Kings chapter 6. Read it. This is a good story, okay? Then it says on the 31st verse, Then he said, God do so and more also to me. If the head of Elijah, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him this day. But Elisha sat in his house, and the elders sat with him, and the king sent a man from before him, but er, but er the messenger to come to him. And he said to the elders, See ye how this son of a murderer has sent to take away mine head, Look, and when the messenger come, it shut the door and hold him fast at the door. It is not sound of his master feet behind him. And yet, while he talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto him and said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should I wait for the Lord any longer? Patience is the key. Wait upon the Lord. I say wait. If they would have waited on the Lord because there was a famine in the land and there was nothing to eat, if they would have waited, hallelujah, Jesus, thank you, God. If they would have just waited upon the Lord, guess what? They would not have devoured, meaning to eat. They would not have eaten that woman's son and she wouldn't have been tricked to kill her son, to eat him, and the other lady, son, yet lived because she hid him. She knew that tomorrow, if she lived to see tomorrow was coming, she was going to have to boil her son and eat. The moral of the story is, ha, yeah, mm, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus, is to wait upon the Lord and let him renew your strength. Let him make a provision for you. Let him provide for you. And you won't have to worry about making a mistake. I hope that you got something out of this. Mm, glory to God. Hallelujah. Out of this verse of the day and devotion of the day. This is a real good devotion. I love the devotions because they go deeper into God's words. Deep, deeper into the mysteries of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm. I told you guys before, if you want to know the mysteries of God, all you have to do is seek and he'll give it to you. He said he's standing at the door and knock. Will you open and let him in? Open the door and let him in. He's not going to force his way in. He ain't going to beg his way in. You got to open the door and let him in. God's word is good. Hallelujah, Jesus. God's word is great. Hallelujah. The title of the devotion, one again, is this. It takes a big person to walk away. That lady had to walk away because she was tricked. She was told to kill her son and they eat him today. And the woman said that she was going to kill her and eat it the next day. Read 2 Kings chapter 6 and ask God to put within you a spirit of discernment. And reveal the mysteries of his words to you. He will give you an understanding. He will give you an eye opener. He will open your ears so that you may hear. He will give you a mind to receive what thus the word is saying to you. God is a good God. He is a God can, that can never fail. Okay? He's everything you need. You know, I heard a preacher say one time that about this song that say, uh, as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. And that's a lie. And I know it's a lie because guess what? God put us, he put us in the world to be a help one to another. When he made Adam, he said that he need some company. He needed some company. He needed some socialization. So that's where Eve came in at. Okay? He was in the world by himself. He didn't have nobody to socialize with. He had no socialization skills. Who was he to socialize with? The animals? No. God created him a helpmate, which was Eve, so that he can have socialization. The word is good. Hey, hallelujah. Mm. Glory. The word is good. Thank you, Jesus. So, kindness is more powerful than violence. Kindness is more powerful than violence. The inspiration written by a woman named Frances Taylor says, Many come to find Elijah and bring him to Sarah. With God's help, they were captured and brought to the king of Israel. But instead of killing them as he wanted to do, Elijah convinced him to feed them and then release them. Okay? To release them back to their masters. The result was that Syria stopped raiding Israel. That's what happened. Once he convinced them to feed them, get them bread, get them water, let them drink, and release them back to the master, then guess what? Syria was stopped being raided because they honored God's advice that he gave them. God told gay Elijah what to say and do. He did it. And that was the reward. They was not to be raided anymore. Listen to this. Then they say the results was that Syria was stopped raiding Israel. We will never end violence with violence. Whether it is war of our words a war between two individuals or a war between two countries. Violence does not bring peace ever. Violence does not bring peace. Love has always been stronger than hate, even though hate is louder. That is so true. The problem is that someone needs to walk away if the fighting is to stop. You, somebody got to be the bigger person. You has to be the bigger person and walk away. OK, we have an idea that walking away is what a sign of weakness. People would say you're weak if you turn around and walk away and don't want to fight. That is a lie. And the truth ain't never been in. it. Listen to this. But it is really a sign of strength. It shows your strength and your growth. 
okay, your maturity. It takes a big person to walk away. The people who walk away are often ridiculed, especially if they are in a position of leadership. That is so true. People that are in position of leadership, some find it hard to walk away because they think it's a sign of weakness. When in reality it's not, it is a sign of strength. It is a sign of maturity. And it is a sign of obedience to the spirit. There are always people who are willing to encourage violence. Yes, it is. We know. We see it every day in this world we are living in. And then it says, let me see. I'm trying to see if it's something else in there. Listen. It takes a bigger person to walk away. It do. Those who encourage violence are equally responsible. And we may learn from Elijah. Read Second Kings, the sixth chapter. And you can really learn something from that. Let's pray. Loving God, I want all of your children to live in peace. Help us to be peacemakers and not warmongers. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, God. Thank you for the worry, Lord. Ask God, may God's worry be a blessing that it already is. As it is, it is, it is. The word of the Lord is a blessing. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for listening. Don't forget we are all under one God, one nation, one love. Peace we have because Jesus left that peace here with us. Jesus came into the world, took on the form of flesh, gave his life so that we may have peace and eternal life. Remember that God loves us all so much that he gave his only begotten son. And I love you too. And until next time, happy Thursday. God bless. I'll see you guys on the next video. And stay on the lookout for the Unfurnished Tour apartment video coming soon. Okay? I love you guys. I love you with all my heart, mind, and soul. God bless. And if God said the same, I'll see you guys on Friday. Peace. God bless.